Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the next president of the United States, President Donald J. Trump. And I'm proud to be an American, where at least I know I'm free. And I won't forget the men who died, who gave that right to me. And I gladly stand up next to you and defend her still today. Cause there ain't no doubt I love this land. God bless the USA. From the lakes of Minnesota to the hills of Tennessee, across the plains of Texas. From sea to shining sea, from Detroit down to Houston, and New York to LA, where there's pride in every American heart, and it's time we stand and say. Thank you very much. Wow, what a nice crowd this is. Has anybody noticed the weather outside? They said, sir, I don't think we're going to make it. I said, we have to. We can't disappoint Green Bay. There's no way. I said, we got to make it. We got to make it. There's never been such spirit. Look, we won in 2016. We did much better in 2028 to say we did a hell of a lot better. But there's more spirit now than at any time that we've ever seen, because we've seen we've seen how bad they are. They're just bad. They are so bad. It's just terrible. But uh, there's never been spirit like this. Never, never, ever, probably for anyone. And I appreciate it. Thank you very much, everybody. I'm thrilled to be back in Wisconsin with thousands of proud, hardworking American patriots. That's what you are. You built this country. You can see we have an empty podium right here to my right. You know what that is? That's for Joe Biden. I'm trying to get him to debate. I'm calling on Crooked Joe to debate anytime, any place. We'll do it any way you want, Joe, so that we can discuss in a friendly manner the real problems of our country of which there are many, instead of trying to have corrupt prosecutors fight your battles for you. That's no good. We got all these corrupt prosecutors, uh, deranged Jack Smith, all of them. These are deranged people. Let's debate outside, Joe. Let's, let's go have a good, solid, friendly debate, just a friendly, where our country's going, because our country's going to hell, and we're not going to let it happen. You know, the most important day in the history of our country will be November 5th of this year. Not long. Before going further, let me add that this is primary night, so get out of here soon. I'll finish this thing real quick so you can go out and vote. Go out and vote. We don't have much of a primary, I must say, but there are a couple of things that you have to vote on. And uh, 
I appreciate your support. We've had tremendous support all over. I mean, honestly, we won Iowa. We won New Hampshire in records, all records. Nevada, we won. South, how about South Carolina? We won in records. We won against the governor there. We won in records, a record number. Every place we won in records. So when you're finished, do I have your word you're going to go out and vote? If you're watching at home and you haven't voted, go vote, go get out there. A lot of television back. That's a lot of television. Fake news. Go vote. Make sure you vote yes on ballot questions one and two. Do you know what that is? That's Ban Zuckerbucks. Ban Zuckerbucks. They put up money. They come out with these ballot boxes. One guy gets 3,000 votes in a good area for us, and the other one gets zero. You know who gets zero? Me. You think that's a real deal? No. You know, we won this state. We won this state by a lot. And it came out that we won this state, actually. You know, when you have open borders, think of it. That's all right. There's one guy. Now, here's what the fake news will do. There was tremendous dissension tonight. It was there. One guy going home to mom. He's going to get the hell beat out of him by his mother. Mom's going to say, what the hell are you doing? You embarrassed me. You embarrassed me. No, the, the papers, the fake news will say it was tremendous dissension. Tremendous. Yeah, one guy. And he's now scared stiff because he's got to go home to his mother. The mother will say, we, I saw you in television. You embarrassed me. Beep, beep. <laughs> With your support, we're going to win the Wisconsin Republican primary in a landslide. That'll be in a few hours. And November 5th, we are going to win this state. We're going to win the White House. And we are going to save our country. We're going to save our country. And what the hell was Biden thinking when he declared Easter Sunday to be Trans Visibility Day? Such total disrespect to Christians. And November 5th is going to be called something else. You know what it's going to be called? Christian Visibility Day, when Christians turn out in numbers that nobody has ever seen before. Let's call it Christian Visibility Day, all right? I've just come from Grand Rapids, Michigan, where I was proud to receive the endorsement of the Police Officers Association of the entire state of Michigan. These are thousands and thousands of officers, and they said it was unanimous. I said, wait a minute, there wasn't one, there wasn't one negative vote. That's pretty cool. I also met with local law enforcement leaders whose communities are being crushed by Biden migrant crime. You know, we have a new category of crime. It's called migrant crime. It was brought to you by the worst president in the history of our country, Joe Biden, sometimes referred to as crooked Joe Biden. He's crooked as a $3 bill. In Venezuela, crime is down. I'm sure you're going to be very happy to hear this. Crime is down in Venezuela by 67 percent because they're taking their gangs and their criminals and depositing them very nicely into the United States. Aren't you happy? Think of it. Who goes down 67 percent? They went down. Look at this man. I call him the wall. He's got the nicest suit. I want to get one of those suits. We built a lot of wall. We have the best numbers ever. We're going to put them up here. I think we're going to put them up pretty soon. You're going to see something that's, that just came out that's incredible. But think of it. Venezuela, which was a lot of... That was an enemy when I left. An enemy, and they were ready to fold. Now they're supplying us with oil. I wouldn't have even thought to buy oil from them. But more importantly, their crime rate is down to 60... It's down by 67%. And the reason is they've taken their gangs and their criminals and they brought them into the United States. Oh, wait till you see next year. They'll be pretty soon, they'll be at no crime. Zero crime in the entire country of Venezuela, the beautiful country of Venezuela. In fact, we'll be going to Venezuela for vacations. Yeah, it's built a lot of it.
They're sending prisoners, murderers, drug dealers, mental patients, terrorists. The worst of every country is coming into our country now. They're coming from the Congo, <laughs> Yemen, Somalia, Syria, all over the world. They're coming there country changing, country threatening, and their country wrecking. They're destroying our country. They're destroying, you know, we can drill and we can get the oil going, we can get, but this is a tough one. We're gonna end up with the largest deportation in American history. We have no choice. Have no choice, right? Have no choice. We have no choice because that's not sustainable by any country. Last week in Grand Rapids, uh, in Grand Rapids, they previously deported illegal alien criminal with multiple prior arrests, many, many arrests, for drunk driving, breaking into houses, and probation violations, was charged with savagely murdering 25-year-old Ruby Garcia. Beautiful, perfect, beautiful, wonderful young girl, shooting her repeatedly with an illegally purchased handgun and dumping her body on the side of a highway to die. Under the Trump administration, we deported this monster. Long ago, we deported him, but under crooked Joe Biden, he was allowed to trespass back into our country and kill beautiful Ruby. Last week, because we had the strongest border and the safest border in the history of our country, and now we have the worst border in the history anywhere in the world, we have the worst border. Last week, another illegal alien criminal was arrested in Alabama for raping a mentally incapacitated 14-year-old girl. And in Chicago recently, an illegal alien gang member who was released into our country by crooked Joe Biden was arrested for a drive-by shooting that left a 27-year-old woman riddled with bullet holes all over her body, she died. I'm here tonight to declare that Joe Biden's border bloodbath, remember they used the name bloodbath, I was talking about something entirely different, but this is a border bloodbath, ends the day I take the oath of office, it ends. With your vote, I will seal the border. I will stop the invasion. I will end the carnage, bloodshed, and killing. And we will crush the human traffickers. You know, they traffic in women, mostly in women. We will vanquish the child smugglers. And we will liberate this nation from Crooked Joe and his migrant armies of dangerous criminals once and for all. This is an invasion of our country. And by the way, hundreds of thousands of people, between the drugs that come in the border and all of the death that's brought into the border in so many different ways. Hundreds of thousands of people are being killed in our country every year. If we had a war with a country like Mexico, we wouldn't lose people like that. This is bigger than a war. Joe Biden is so weak on the border that other countries are now publicly taunting and extorting him by pumping migrants across our wide open border. They're opening their jails and they're opening their mental institutions and they're bringing them right in and nobody stops them. Nobody, nobody has any idea what's going on. Just this week, Mexico's president declared that they will keep the flood of illegal aliens pouring in. They're going to pour into our country unless Biden hands over $20 billion a year just to sit down. Do you think he'd say that to me? And I know him. He's a friend of mine. He's a nice man. He's a socialist, but you can't have everything, right? right? These young guys can't have everything. At least he's not a communist. He's a socialist. Never got to communism, although who knows? That could be, that could be next. Look, $20 billion a year they want just to sit down, and he wants it fast from U.S. taxpayers. Lift sanctions on communist Cuba. That's what he wants to do. So that, uh, that's the end of the Miami Cuban vote for crooked Joe Biden. I can tell you that. He wants to lift the sanctions on Cuba. I had sanctions in Cuba to a level that they were willing to make a deal at any time. We would have had that election. If that election were a legitimate election, we would have had a deal with Cuba. We wouldn't have had Russia attacking Ukraine. And we wouldn't had October. We would not have had October 7th in Israel. I can guarantee you that. But we will do all that we can and grants. Think of this. They want to grant mass amnesty, mass amnesty to millions of illegal aliens all throughout the United States. They want to give a mass amnesty. Other than that, he's doing a great job on immigration, right? This is the worst president in the history of our country. 
If I was president, no world leader would ever dare to talk to America that way. And they didn't. They had respect for us as a country. They respected me. You know, uh, if you look at Prime Minister Orban of Hungary, he said, the only way you're going to clean up this world is if Trump becomes president again. I said, that's nice. I actually believe that. They asked him, what's going on? He said, you got to have Trump, get Trump back. You got to get Trump back, he said. He said, he said, China was afraid of, I don't want to use the word afraid, I'm just quoting him, because I like to say they respected me, but you know. He said, China was afraid of him, Russia was afraid of him, North Korea, everybody was afraid of him. The only way you're going to clean it up, I happen to agree with that, though. I think the only way, because this guy, he can't put two sentences together. Biden, he can't find his way off a stage like this. He got stairs all over the place. Secret Service has to come and take him out of off the stage. In this case, we have some very nice people up here. I don't know how the hell they got here, but they're, but they're very nice. And you would help him off the stage. I don't think they would, actually. I really don't. Joe Biden is not respected and Joe Biden is not feared. He does, they don't care about him. The only thing he's good at is cheating on elections and disinformation. <laughs> disinformation. You know, if pilots come in, he says, I used to fly planes. If truckers come in, he says, I used to, I used to truck. I used to drive a nice truck. <laughs> His biggest lie of all, he said, did you ever see him swing a golf club? He's like this. Like, <laughs> He said he was a six handicap. He's not a six handicap. He's not a 36 handicap. Under my leadership, America soon will be respected again, very quickly, respected like never before. Respected like never before. Joe Biden's flood of illegal aliens is not just bringing in massive crime, it's also bringing massive costs and massive problems, big problems. Problems like we've never had a country like this, honestly. Hey, we've been here a long time. We've loved our country a long time. We've never seen such disrespect. Even the way China talks to us, like we're children, they never talk that way to me. They're not going to talk that way to me. Look no further than the small town of Whitewater, Wisconsin. Does anybody know Whitewater? After being inundated with Biden migrants, this tiny town now has a budget shortfall of over $400,000. Their public schools are straining with hundreds of new migrant students who don't speak a word of English. Their police force is being diverted from traffic stops to migrant crime, our favorite new term, migrant crime. It's a new category of crime. And their town is becoming a hotbed of cartel activity and illicit drugs like nobody's ever even envisioned before. A vote for Trump is a vote to save Wisconsin and it's a vote to save your country. This country is finished if we don't win this election. And I heard somebody say it, a scholar say it, uh, two, three days ago said, if we don't win, this may be the last election our country ever has. And there could be truth to it. That's where we're going. Because Joe Biden is a threat to democracy. He's the threat to democracy. Thank you. Thank you. We will terminate every open borders policy of the Biden administration and begin the largest domestic deportation operation in American history, starting with all of the criminals that are pouring in, the criminals and the terrorists. And you know who's going to tell us who they are? Our local police. Our local police, because our local police know their names, their middle names, their phone numbers. They know everything about them. One of the most important issues in this race will be how Joe Biden's border invasion is also going to obliterate Medicare and Social Security for American seniors. What he's doing by allowing millions, 15 million, 20 million people this year, it'll be, I think it's already 15, he's destroying your Social Security, he's destroying your Medicare and many things else. He's also destroying your way of life. If the millions of Biden migrants are allowed to stay as Joe Biden intends, they will cost taxpayers trillions and trillions of dollars and Medicare and Social Security will buckle and they will collapse. You know, it's very tenuous. You understand that? 
You can't do it. No country can sustain what's happening. We are being invaded and invaded by a lot of people that are people we don't want in our country. I will never, ever let that happen. Social Security will be strong and powerful. Medicare will be strong. You deserve it. The Treasury will be raped, plundered and robbed a bear to pay for welfare, free health care, free housing, food stamps, Medicaid and countless other public benefits. And think of it, the legions and legions of Biden migrants pouring into the it's really becoming a third world country. We are actually becoming, if you think about it, a third world country. And we're not going to let that happen. We're not going to let it happen. So to every Wisconsin voter, if you want to help Joe Biden wheel granny off the cliff, remember what they had? They had that with Paul Ryan, not my favorite person, by the way. I remember after I won the election in 2016, I had a like a hall very much like this was packed. And I introduced Paul Ryan. The place booed the hell out of him. I said, I guess they don't like him too much. That was when they used to like him by comparison. They like him a lot less now. If you want to help Joe Biden wheel granny off the cliff to fund government benefits for legals, then vote for crooked Joe Biden. But when I am president, instead of throwing granny overboard, I will send Joe Biden's illegal aliens back home. You're going back home. You have to know. And if they know that, remember this, if they know that, they're not coming. You know, the problem is Biden got up and he said, welcome, everybody. Welcome to the world. We'll give you free education. We'll give you everything. But welcome to the world. And they came and they're coming now. There's a massive caravan right now coming through Mexico and nobody is stopping it. Unlike Biden and the open borders Democrats, I will always protect Medicare and Social Security for our great seniors. I will protect them. They want to also increase the uh, the average age, you know, that the minimum age. They want to increase it. And uh, we're not doing any of that. We have so much wealth under our feet in liquid gold and so many other things. We can do it without destroying your Social Security and your Medicare. And I made that promise to you and I kept that promise. Remember, there was an oh, Social Security. And for four years, we never touched it. We let it be. And that's what's going to happen again. I make that promise to you. Your Medicare and your Social Security with me will be safe, but with them, it's not going to be safe. It's going to be destroyed. Not because they want to do it, although maybe they do, but I doubt it. But, but they do want people to come in endlessly. They had chances two weeks ago, four weeks ago, eight weeks ago, even when I came in. I built 571 miles of wall. We had 200 miles sitting there waiting to be erected, far more than I said I was going to build. And that's one of the reasons the numbers are so good. And if they put up the chart, when they put up that chart, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Put it up anytime you can, fellas. There it is. Right there. See that low spot? This is illegal migrants coming into our country. See the arrow on the bottom? That was my last week in office. That was the lowest number in history. When this guy went to the beach, if he would have just left everything alone, he might have gone down as a decent president, at least on the border. He still had a lot of other problems, let's face it. But on the border, look at that number. That number is so much lower than anything else. And then look at the right of that number. That's what happened after I left. It was an invasion of our country. It's an amazing chart, actually. I saw this. It's a Border Patrol chart. But look at that low number. Got, got it down to practically nothing. Now, people came in, but they came in legally. We want them to come in legally, right? But I just, you have to study that. I tell you what, even the fake news was impressed with that number. And they're not impressed with anything because they're fake. No one has been hurt by Biden's migrant invasion more than our great African-American and Hispanic-American communities and union workers, right? Oh, yes. <laughs> great. And I see my great women from North Carolina here. You know, these women, this is 119 rallies that they've been to. And this isn't even a rally. They don't care if it's a rally or not, but we all like each other, right? They're great women. I don't know what the hell their husbands have on their minds. They travel without husband and they've come to 100. I think it's about 119 of them. And we also have front row Joe's around here. Oh, look at that front row Joe's. These guys have I don't know who's winning. 
But it's a lot of them. There he is. There she is. Thank you very much. And thank you. I hope you're enjoying yourself because I am. And I hope you're able to get back when you go outside and you see about 12 feet of snow. <laughs> Biden has granted millions of work permits to illegal aliens, crushing wages for actual Americans while he drives up your gas prices by 50 percent, 60 percent, 75 percent. And by the way, if you notice, energy costs are going up a lot over the last month. But while Biden has betrayed African-Americans and Hispanic-Americans, union workers and everyone else, I will fight for you like never before. You know, the unions will fail because of what's happening here. The unions will not be able to sustain this. The unions are going to be, uh, they're not going to be unions very long. They're not going to be able to sustain it. But I think the worst hurt will be the African-Americans. Then you're going to have the Hispanic-Americans. They're going to be hurt tremendously by this invasion. It is indeed an invasion. And it's not, it maybe in some cases, but I'll tell you, they're coming from places that you don't want them to come from. In my first term, we built the greatest economy in the history of the world. We had record tax cuts and regulation cuts and rising wages for cities. That's right. Totally, totally rising within all our cities, but for citizens of every race, religion, color, and creed, and all of this without any inflation. Now the inflation's a record number. It could be 75%. You know, they like to say it's 58% and 54, probably 75%. And anything you made is more than wiped out. Look at your grocery bill. When you go for groceries now, you're paying three times what you paid two years ago. Joe Biden squandered everything we did under the catastrophe of Bidenomics. He thinks it's a good term. It's a horrible term. Wisconsin manufacturing workers are suffering and Milwaukee's 30th street industrial corridor is being gutted. They're all leaving. Just last week, Master Lock, I buy Master Locks, closed down. And now I won't buy them anymore. <laughs> They're not making it. They're going to make them in Mexico now. They're moving to Mexico and to China. Thanks, Master Lock. We appreciate it. But it's really yet another Biden surrender. We don't let them do that. We can't do that. So what you do is you put tariffs on them. So the locks cost so much, they have to stay, you know. It's not that complicated, but some people think it is. Some people think, oh, that's so terrible. You know, we took in hundreds of billions of dollars from China. No president ever took in 10 cents, not 10 cents. And we gave 28 billion of it to your farmers. Many of the people in Wisconsin got a check. And if you think it's easy to get 28 billion for the farmers from President Xi, uh, let's see who else could do it. I said, would you like to give our farmers 28 billion? And the reason is they were taking advantage of our farmers for many, many years before I got there. And I went to our Secretary of Agriculture, Sonny Perdue. I said, Sonny, what's the damage that was done? He said, over a period of two or three years, it was about $28 billion. I said, that's okay. They're going to pay us back. And they did. They paid us. They gave us $28 billion. I distributed every penny of that to the farmers and some of the people in this room. You think Joe Biden is thinking about getting money from China for the farmers? He just wants to go to sleep. Leave me alone, darling. I want to sleep. I want to sleep. That would never have happened under, under me where you go, hey, look. That, that they allowed that to happen, to put us in a position where we were horribly treated. Our farmers were so badly treated, but we got the money back. And you remember I said, it's going to take a little while, this negotiation. But think about buying a bigger tractor and more land, right? And six months later, it happened. They broke, and they gave us the best deal, one of the greatest trade deals ever. But then when COVID came, I, I don't even talk about that trade deal anymore, because COVID was so devastating for the world. I call it the China virus, because I like to be accurate. With your vote, we will throw out Bidenomics. And we will reinstate Maganomics. We love MAGA. Make America great again. Make America great again. You ever see Biden? We will stop. What's that word? We, MAGA. We will stop MAGA. We will stop it. I said, does he know what MAGA means? It means make America great again. He wants to stop it. It's true, he does. He does, actually. We will stop Biden's inflation train wreck, and we will drill, baby, drill. We're going to get your energy prices way down. You know, he's gone back to my energy for the drilling, but the day after the election, but he's the drilling now 
because prices were going so crazy. The day after the election, it all stops because he wants everybody to have electric cars, which should, it's, the whole thing is ridiculous. Nothing is as crazy as allowing millions of people to come into our country. Nothing. But the electric car, the electric car, electric vehicle is crazy because they don't go far. They don't go far. They're all going to be made in China. They're not going to be made in your country. You want your country. But think of it. We have more natural resources. We have more oil and gas. We have a thing called gasoline. We have more than any country in the world, and we don't use it. We want to go to all electric, which we don't have. California is a wreck. You know California? You know, you've heard of Governor Newscom, right? <laughs> Governor Newscom. He gets on, oh, we're doing great. We're doing great, absolutely great in California. No, they're not doing great. They're doing terribly. I mean, if he ever became the candidate, which I don't think he will, but if he ever did, uh, all we have to do is show what's happened out there. But they want to go all electric. Uh, it's just crazy. You know, Germany tried it, right? Germany went all soft. They got rid of their coal and they got rid of their nuclear. They're out of business. Now they're rebuilding a coal plant every... China's building a plant a coal plant every single week and they think it's more than that and we're playing around with these windmills that cost a fortune most expensive energy if biden is re-elected he's promising to impose a six trillion dollar tax hike which will turn literally the u.s economy will destroy the u.s economy i never heard of a guy campaigning where he wants to raise taxes you know all my life I'd listen with my father we found it very interesting i always liked politics i never thought i'd be on this side of the ledger but here we are. How did we do? We did okay. We did okay. We did okay. We did okay. Actually, we had one of the greatest, they were saying we had one of the greatest presidencies in history. And it's true. And we're going to top it with this one. We're going to top it. And you know, in a, in a certain way, if you remember, I campaigned on the border because the border was bad. But then, um, and then what happened in 2020, I couldn't really even mention. I'd say to my people, I want to talk about the border. They say, sir, the border, you fixed it. It's 100 percent perfect. You're, I want to talk about the border. They said, sir, nobody cares about the border. You fixed it. Well, now the border is 100 times worse than it was in 2016. There's never been a border so bad. There's never been corruption and rape and pillage and, and loss and people coming in at levels that nobody's ever seen with the people where they're coming from, criminals. Criminals, criminals like never before, just pouring into our country. We have no idea who they are. So when I fixed it in 2016, I believe this could be like a hundred times worse. That was a bad border, but that was bad, understandably bad. This is at a level that nobody's ever seen a border like this. We've taken in, I think, at least 15 million people. That's bigger than almost every state. And I think by the time we end, we might almost be, by the time we get this lunatic out of office, how he can like this, by the time we get him out of office, he's going to be at close to 20 million people. He will have allowed into our country, mostly unchecked, unvetted. We have no idea who they are, where they came from, but we're going to find out. It's a big problem. When I win, you are all getting tax cuts and you're getting a brand new Trump economic boom. And that's where we were headed. And that's where we were headed until we got uh, sidelined by a wonderful election. Wasn't that wonderful? Remember at 10 o'clock, everyone's calling me. They say, congratulations, sir. The biggest people, congratulations, sir. I said, yeah, but, but you know, these people are cheaters. But I don't like to accept anything yet. And then at 3.02 in the morning, a lot of dumps happened. A lot of bad things happened. But you know what? The good news is we've seen how bad they are. And because of that, there's more spirit now than ever before. Because of that, we'll be able to do things to make our country great again that we probably could have never really done had it been a more traditional turnover. So it's going to be great. And it's no wonder Joe Biden and his thugs are so desperate to stop us. They know that we are the only ones who can stop them. That's why they're weaponizing law enforcement, high-level election interference against Biden's top political opponent. Who does that happen to be? Me, here I am. I got indicted more than Alphonse Capone. Al Capone. Scarface. 
You know how bad he was? You know, these are, I know some of the guys in the front row. They're tough guys. If you ever looked at Alphonse Capone, you wouldn't be tough at all. You'd be dead by the morning, most likely. I got indicted more than Alphonse. Alphonse was a tough man. They did a movie called Scarface. Check it out. Even if it was half true, you don't want to deal with him. But the fact is, the people understand it. They get it. It's election interference at the highest level. Never happened in our country before. How about Fawny? Fawny. F-A-N-I. Fanny. It's Fanny. I call her Fanny Wade. <laughs> no, what kind of stuff is this? And this was done in conjunction with the White House. The DA in Manhattan was done in conjunction with the White House. They actually took people and put them into the DA's office. The Attorney General, today, yesterday to be more accurate, I put in a bond. $175 million. I put up a bond. No, but on something where I was not guilty of anything. I did a great job. The bank said he's one of our cherished customers. I borrowed money at their request because that's what they do. They lend money. I borrowed money. I paid it back. I actually paid it back early. They want to charge me $450 million fine. This was a corrupt judge in New York, out of control. The fine was lowered substantially, but think of it. I have to put up, you see, this is all election interference, because that's money I could have used on the election. This is all election, put up $175 million. Nobody ever heard of a $175 million bond. I'm honestly, I'm very proud of the fact, I don't think there's been $175 million. Nobody, a bond is for half a million dollars, a million dollars, or much less than that. A bond isn't for this. And this is what they, and they used a statute to go after me that was never used before. It's a consumer fraud statute, has never been used for this before. These are corrupt people. These are, there was no, uh, no problem. There was no anything. This, this was like a perfect transaction. Charge me $450 million fine. These are sick people. And we have to, we have to go on and we have to win. And we have to hope the appeals courts are honest, because if they're not honest, this country, I'll tell you, where are we going? This has been such a blight on New York. The appellate division actually gave me the case. I won the case because I won it in the appellate division, not the 175. I won that, too. They reduced it from 450 to 175. But I won the case because it's called statute of limitations. The appellate division ruled in my favor. That means most of the case is gone. The judge refused to honor it. Now, he, nobody ever heard of that before. So the appellate division said, you won the case, that's it. And the judge said, I don't accept it. He's called a rogue judge. He's a rogue judge. He's a fake judge. I'm not the threat to democracy, Joe Biden and the fascists that control him, and they do control him, are the real threat to democracy. Because it's not Joe. I really don't believe it's Joe. I think it's people that surround him in that beautiful Oval Office, the Resolute Desk. Can you imagine him sitting at the Resolute Desk? What a great desk. All of this persecution is only happening because I'm running for president and I'm leading very big in all the polls. If I wasn't leading or if I was like in or if I didn't run, if I didn't run, none of this stuff would be happening. If I was in fourth place, like all the other candidates, they didn't do too well. How did the other candidates do? Not too well. In the latest Emerson poll, we're leading in Wisconsin by four points, and in other polls, we're leading by 10, 11, and 12 points. Thank you. Whoa. You know, for years I used to tell the fake news back there, look at all those cameras. Wow, that's a lot of cameras. But I used to tell them, show the crowd. I gave up with that because they don't do it. But I used to say, and I thought that the camera, they weren't able to, they never would show the crowds. And then we had a little demonstration in one case and where a couple of people were screaming something. And those cameras turned around like they were pretzels. They were. <laughs> That steel was bending like 15 different ways under the guy's leg. They were showing that fight back there because that was bad. But they never show. I'll give you an example. Cameras, why don't you just turn around, show the extent of this crowd to every corner, from corner to corner. Show it. Show it. But they won't do it.
They won't do it. They won't do it. Look at that. They just keep the camera right on me. Normally, I'd like that. I've been after them for years to do it. They've never done it. They just don't want to do it. They'll show one little demonstrator over here who weakly said something. I don't know. Oh. And one person, and they'll make a big deal. But they won't show the fact that we have a room that's sold out and people are outside standing in the snow. They don't want to do that. They never do that. The radical left Democrats. Thank you. Thank you, Uncle Sam. Look at Uncle Sam. Look at that guy. Now, in real life, he's probably a doctor or a CPA, but look at him. He has, these guys have, look at, look, we have the wall here. We have more Uncle Sam's. I love you guys. It's uh, amazing. The radical left Democrats rigged the presidential election in 2020, and we're not going to allow them to rig the presidential election in 2024. Every time the radical left Democrats, Marxists, communists, and fascists indict me, I consider it a great, great badge of honor because I'm being indicted for you. Thank you very much. I praise you. Never forget our enemies want to take away my freedom because I will never let them take away your freedom. That's true. They want to silence me because I will never let them silence you. And in the end, they're not after me, they're after you. And I just happen to be standing in the way, but I always will. We are thrilled to be joined tonight by some great people. Your Senator, Ron Johnson. Ron, wherever you may be. Ron. Thank you, Ron. And members of Congress, friends of mine, real fighters. Ron's a fighter, they're fighters. Glenn Grothman and Tom Tiffany. Tom, thank you. Glenn, thank you. A man who's done a fantastic job, and he promised me a victory here, so he, you know, we have to give him a good hand, okay? Wisconsin Republican Party Chairman Brian Schimming. Brian, thank you, Brian. You promise. And a great guy, an influencer, a guy with great influence, actually, but he's really a good man. He's a good person. Alex Bruzewitz. Alex. Where are you, Alex? Thank you, Alex. Thank you. Look at that guy. And a man who's doing really good. U.S. He's just about even in the polls. I see it. He's a handsome devil. I just met him backstage. And a beautiful wife, a beautiful family. U.S. Senate candidate, Eric Hovde. Eric Hovde. Where's Eric? Eric, good job. Man, I tell you. Eric. I met Eric and I've studied Eric and I because we have to get it right and running against some very fine people, really. But I've looked it out and they're going to have other opportunities. Eric, I am giving you my complete and total endorsement. So go out and win. Go out and win. Go out and win. You better win. We always win. I did it. I did it for Mike Rogers. He went up. 60 points or something in one night and I did it. I'll tell you what I did it for uh, a gentleman running for the Senate a really good man running for the Senate in Ohio. He ended up winning by 21 points. You all know about that one. That was a good one. And I'm doing it now for this gentleman because I think he's going to be fantastic. You have tremendous potential and she's a very weak candidate. I mean, if you lose to her, that's not a good thing. OK, <laughs> she's a very weak. Candidate. So you have my complete Eric. So everybody go out, support him and get him to win, okay? I think he's got a good chance, real good chance. Thank you. Very important, that's a big race. We'll be here to help. Also, a friend of mine, somebody with tremendous courage, the greatest purchaser of advertising in the history of the world. There is no man that can buy, if I said, I'll tell you what, if I let him buy my ads, you would have Trump ads on all day, all night, and I would have paid half for them. The great, legendary Mike Lindell and Mrs. Lindell. Mrs. Lindell. He's a great guy. Fantastic guy with a beautiful new wife. 
Congratulations, huh? Look at that couple. That's a beautiful couple. Beautiful couple. From the very first day that we take back the White House from crooked Joe Biden, I believe we are going to have the four greatest years in the history of our country. In my first four years, I kept my promise to the workers of Wisconsin. I got you so many contracts, including that big shipping contract. You remember that one? We ended the disaster known as NAFTA, the worst trade deal ever made, and replaced it with the great, the greatest trade deal ever made in the history of our country, the USMCA, that's Mexico and Canada. And now they want to renegotiate it. Don't do it, Joe. Don't renegotiate it. Don't do it. We had monumental victories for Wisconsin dairy farmers, and the dairy farmers here, they know it because Canada was taking advantage of us. For our great veterans, we passed VA accountability and VA choice. We got it through Congress. It wasn't easy. Right? Look at him. Look at that guy. And because of that, we were able to get you, right? If you had to wait any length of time, like a day or two for a doctor, they used to wait three, four months before they could see a doctor. You went out to a private doctor. You got yourself taken care of. We actually, we saved so many lives with that, and we took care of it. In addition, we were able to fire people that were bad people. We couldn't do it because of the civil service laws. And we had sadists. We had sadists. We had some bad people. They wouldn't have done it in prime time, I tell you right now. But they, we had some very bad people. We fired 9,000 people, got them out, replaced them with loving people, people that loved our vets, right? And, uh, and we got a 92% approval rating, the highest in the history of the VA and the last time it was at 44 percent and now it's going way down way way down so we take care of our vets they're not doing a good job right now biden's doing a terrible job with the vets we fully rebuilt the u.s military created space force and i was the first president in decades who started no new wars i finished a couple but i didn't start and i brought our troops back home and remember you would have never had Ukraine being attacked, and you would have never had Israel being attacked. Those things wouldn't have happened before I even arrive at the Oval Office shortly after we win the presidency. I will have the horrible war between Russia and Ukraine settled. I'll get it settled. I know them both very well. We will restore peace through strength, and we will prevent World War III. And nobody else can say, you're going to end up in World War III. This guy doesn't know what the hell he's doing. He doesn't know what he's saying. He doesn't know who to speak to. He's lost. He's a lost soul. Our president is a lost soul. It's pathetic. It's pathetic. I will pass the Trump Reciprocal Trade Act. If China or any other country makes us pay 100 or 200 percent tariff, we will make them pay a reciprocal tariff of 100 or 200 percent right back. You screw us and we'll screw you. That's what it is. And very simply, as tariffs on foreign countries go up, taxes on American workers and families will come down very dramatically. We'll reduce those taxes. Foreign countries have taken such advantage of us. We renegotiated so many deals. China, Japan, South Korea, so many deals. The Philippines, so many deals. We made them from horrible deals. I used to sit back and say, who the hell made these deals? They were horrible. And we made so many great deals out of it. Now we have a time to do a real job because we have so much room. There's so much room. We have been taken advantage of by foreign countries. As an example, your automobile industry, of which you have a lot, but your automobile industry, China now is building plants in Mexico. Big plants, really big plants, because they think they're going to sell, build cars in Mexico, not here, build cars in Mexico and sell them into our country. If they're going to do that, we're going to put a tariff on that's so high they won't be able to do it, okay? They should not be doing that. And they were given the go-ahead by Biden. You know why? Because he accepts a lot of money from China. Can you believe it? This guy gets a lot of money from China. We have, he's a Manchurian candidate. On day one, I will terminate Crooked Joe's insane electric vehicle mandate. In addition to this job-killing disaster, Joe Biden is also preparing to approve a waiver request from California, allowing them to enact a complete and total ban on all gasoline-powered cars and trucks. I will terminate that. 
If this Biden ban on gasoline cars goes into effect, the U.S. auto industry will be slaughtered. All of your car making here and a place that I just got back from Michigan will all be gone. What they've done to our automobile manufacturing. As an example, Mexico, go back to Mexico. They took 32 percent over the years, not during my years, over the years, took 32 percent of our car making ability. They took it. They took it out. They t- it's a massive industry now in Mexico. It's crazy. We will, very importantly, restore law and order to our country. And I'm going to indemnify all police officers and law enforcement officials throughout the United States to protect them from being destroyed by the radical left for taking strong actions on crime. And the other day, I was very honored to visit with the family of an amazing man, New York police detective Jonathan Diller, you read it, who was gunned down by a vicious thug previously arrested by different law enforcement agencies over 21 times, very serious crimes. And the person with him was known as killer. He was actually considered worse. He should never have been allowed to be on the streets again when I'm reelected. I will crack down on the left-wing jurisdictions that refuse to prosecute dangerous criminals and set loose violent felons on cashless bail. I think I'm the only one in America that has to put up a bond. For what? Nobody knows what I did. I had to put up a bond. If you kill somebody, there's no bond. Don't worry about it. Go ahead. Kill somebody else. These people are crazy, I'll tell you. And I will ask Congress to send a bill to my desk ensuring that anyone who murders a police officer will receive immediately the death penalty. I guess they like the police. I like the police. I like the police. So we're going to do that. And you'll see that whole situation come to a halt. And again, the the family, Stephanie, the whole family was so incredible. The Diller family, so incredible. It's hard to explain how beautiful it it was. It was uh, sad, horrible in so many ways. But the family, so many police officers in the family, uh, the mother, Stephanie, was incredible. The beautiful, most beautiful baby you ever saw, Ryan. And uh, their whole life change can never be the same. Can never. She knew him since early high school, never knew anybody else, didn't want to know anybody else. And there he was. It's just a horrible thing that's going on. Vicious kind of thing, too. Vicious. Opened the door and just started shooting at him. And uh, just a horrible thing. He still grabbed the gun. He was fought him. He was blown to pieces. He grabbed the gun. He fought him. And his people came over and they shot the, the killer. But... Uh, Amazing to see this, the love and the respect. Thousands of policemen and women went up to that funeral parlor. They were, the lines were so long, I was driving for blocks and blocks. When I was leaving, I made a turn and I was driving for blocks before that line ended. It was a really amazing thing to watch, but an incredible family. So sad, so sad. In addition, I will take aggressive action to end radical Democrat lunacy known as squatters' rights. They want to squat into your house. There's now an epidemic of illegal squatters throughout our country. They're trying to steal American homes by exploiting Marxist laws and Democrat-run cities. I mean, they're actually going into a house and you can't get them out. That's in Democrat-run. That's just in, it's not working in Republican-run cities. That's why, as president, I will establish a federal task force to use every authority to that we have at our disposal to end squatting in America. Squatting's a big deal. It sounds like a little bit of a weird topic, but it's not. It's a very bad thing. When you go home and there's somebody in your house and they won't get out and you bring the law enforcement and the law enforcement says, I can't do anything. If your constitutional rights have been violated, we will defend you. If you have illegal aliens invading your home, we will deport you. We will not allow your homes to be taken from you in any way, shape, or form. We will stop the plunder, rape, slaughter, and destruction of our American suburbs, cities, and towns. And we will end deadly sanctuary cities. We're going to end them. I will shift massive portions of federal law enforcement to immigration enforcement. We're going to do immigration enforcement, not paperwork. We're doing all paperwork. 
We're doing everything. On day one, I will sign a new executive order to cut federal funding for any school, pushing critical race theory, transgender insanity, and other inappropriate racial, sexual, or political content onto our children. I will not give one penny to any school that has a vaccine mandate or a mask mandate. And I will keep men out of women's sports. And I'll fully uphold the Second Amendment, of course. I did it better than anybody. Nothing happened. Your Second Amendment was protected with me as your president. We will protect innocent life and we will restore free speech. And I will secure our elections. We're going to secure our elections. Our goal will be one day voting with paper ballots, very simple, and voter ID. But until then, Republicans must win. We want to landslide. We want it to be too big to rig. Too big to rig. Too big to rig. Too big to If you took the 10 worst presidents in the history of the United States and added them up, they would not have done near the destruction to our country as Joe Biden and the Biden administration has done. Nobody's done damage. Remember, I used to say the five worst presidents. I made it 10. I think I could make it 20. You want to know that there's nobody that's hurt our country like this total lunatic. He's a lunatic. What they're doing to our country is not acceptable. It's it's not even a survivable situation. So if you want to save America, then get everyone you know, register them Republican as soon as possible, volunteer for our campaign and get out and vote in record numbers. We want record numbers. Even tonight, it's important to get out just to let them know we're coming on November 5th. We're coming. You got to let them know. So remember, I want to see your voting booths. If this crowd all goes to, I want to see. But remember, you're going to go out and vote tonight. Together, we're taking on some of the most menacing forces in conclusion. And vicious opponents are people have ever seen. We've never seen anything like what we're seeing right now. But no matter how hateful or corrupt the communists and criminals we're fighting against may be, you must never forget this nation does not belong to them. This nation belongs to you. It belongs to you. This is your home. This is your heritage. And our American liberty is your God-given right. And you know that they they even want to challenge God. They want to challenge. They are. They want to challenge everything from Madison to Milwaukee, from La Crosse to Kenosha and from Greenfield to Green Bay. We inherit the legacy of Wisconsin patriots who braved incredible dangers to carve out life in a vast and wild frontier, but a beautiful frontier. We stand on the shoulders of American giants who crossed the oceans, explored the continent, settled the Great Plains, won the Wild West, laid down the railroad, raised up those great, beautiful skyscrapers. I built some of them, too. <laughs> Conquered the skies, fought two world wars, defeated fascism and communism mastered spaceflight and made America into the single greatest nation in the history of the world. But now we are a nation in decline. We are a failing nation. We are a failing nation. We are a nation that has lost its confidence, it's lost its willpower, and it's lost its strength. We are a nation that has lost its way. But we are not going to allow this horror to continue. Three years ago, we were a great nation. And we will soon be a great nation again. It was hardworking patriots like you, Wisconsin, who built this country. And it's hardworking patriots like you who are going to save our country. It's going to save our country. This is a very, very perilous time. We will fight for America like no one has ever fought before. 2024 is our final battle. With you at my side, we will demolish the deep state. We will expel the warmongers. We will drive out the globalists. We will cast out the communists, Marxists, and fascists. We will throw off the sick political class that hates our country. They absolutely hate our country. 
We will rout the fake news media. We will drain the swamp and we will liberate our country from these tyrants and villains once and for all. We're going to do that. We have no choice, so we're not going to have our country left. Like those patriots before us, we will not bend. We will not break. We will not yield. We will never give in. We will never give up. We will never, ever back down. Can do that. Like you. With your support, we will go on to victory, the likes of which no one has ever seen before. We will evict crooked Joe Biden, the worst president in the history of our country, from the White House. And we will take back our country on November 5th, 2024, the most important day in the history of our country. The great silent majority is rising like never before. And under our leadership, it's our leadership, the forgotten man and woman will be forgotten no longer. You will be forgotten no longer. You weren't forgotten for four beautiful years. We are one movement, one people, one family, and one glorious nation under God. And together we will make America powerful again. Make America wealthy again. Make America strong again. Make America proud again. We will make America safe again. And we will make America great again. Thank you, Wisconsin. Go out and vote. Go out and vote. God bless you all. Thank you.